welcome back to our channel uh, here at Cartier Fingers we are bringing to you all the things we're interested about and painting is one of them so for today I actually thought that we might just go into an adventure together because I want to try to paint something abstract inspired with some colors that I really like and actually are the colors of this channel some cyans and blues and some magenta uh, tones and to be honest, I don't have any particular idea how this is going to turn out. So you are going to be discovering this with me as we go. And I decided to do this. Let's start just painting, preparing them. I decided to do this because when people ask me, like, what do you like about painting? One thing that I can say is that I like the colors and I like how colors mix and how colors look. And I have always been very interested in abstract art as well, since I'm like young and small I used to go to um, art museums I really liked um, abstract painting impressionism for example and then some more abstract, abstract like Miro or Kandinsky and when I look at art and when I look at people out there painting and using watercolors I tend to always end up looking at more abstract type of art and I don't dismiss the how much um, how difficult it is to actually do realism and very uh, paintings that really represent reality. But to me, somehow abstract art really has the capacity to evoke me to to think about new stuff. And when I see an abstract piece, it doesn't really have to mean anything, but I can always try to see things in it. It's a little bit like the game of like, what do you see in this cloud or in that cloud? So today we're just going to get some paper, some watercolors, some water, and maybe even some salt here and some spray of water as well and just put water into the paper put pigment into the water see how they mix and as we go try to make a piece that it's uh, nice and actually before starting i am going to do something that i think a lot of people like and i also like it which is tape tape the corners of the paper <laughs> because then we can Mm, put the colors and the painting in a way that we want and then whenever we're done we can actually take the the tape away and get like a perfectly framed picture and taking the tape away is actually such a rewarding thing when painting you're gonna see when we're done um, here here if you are here because you are looking for inspiration for painting abstract watercolors, thank you for being here first. And I hope that you can actually get some ideas of how to just get the paper uh, painted. Okay, that was a little bit short. Maybe we can put it here. Yes. And the last one. This is a really fun part. Okay, great. So now we press it quite well. We can still move this around. And we're just going to start by, yeah, I'm going to start by, I spray the colors. I'm going to put some spraying here as well. I will also drop some water like this. And I am going to start picking up colors. I'm going to do... As I said, some I have Carmine here, Queen Aquidon Rose, I have Mother Lake Rose, I have some Violet here, and some Azure Blue, and maybe some Indigo. And with this, let's see what we can get. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. Let's start with the Carmine first. Yeah, I just want to get some more water here. We can actually put some in the palette as well. Water it. Mm -hmm. We can spray some like this. This is one of my favorite ways of also bringing paper, paint to the paper. And now let's take, as we say, some indigo here. Beautiful, beautiful color. It's a little bit dry. There we go. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, 
some. I really love how this um, really deep carmine color, which is a deep magenta, goes into into the indigo blue pigments. And yeah, let's maybe take a little bit of this quinacridone rose, which you can see already has very different hue, much more purpley, although it's still a red pigment. But very different. Let's drop some over here. Let's see some water down around here. And now let's just explore Mother Lake here. Yet another hue. You can see that I really like these colors. <laughs> it's like the crunchy finger colors. Um, I wanna drop some. Azure blue is pretty here as well, so you can see it. such a nice color. Very nice. I think that's going to drop. Let's make some blooms. See how they behave. Nice. I'm going to put some here by itself. And now I am going to maybe spray a little bit what we have here. Let's just work with this like that. We can always put a little bit of another paper here. And we're working with sprays. Lovely. And this type of art doesn't have to have a meaning. If you just want some relaxation, taking your paints, putting it into paper, you don't really have to come in with an idea. We can just, just go ahead and take inspiration from the colors you like and then see how we can mix those to create different... You can also use this type of abstract exploration to see what your pens, uh, your brush can do on your paper. So you can take a little bit of a uh, color and then you can just see what kind of marks does my brush, brush makes. And then maybe we can drop a little bit of here. And together with looking at what kind of marks your brush can make, you can also check what kind of mixes of colors can you get. Some you might like, some might not, but you just need to go ahead and do it. Art is just for yourself. You really don't need, to, you just need to kind of overcome the fear of kind of disappointing yourself, which is something I always end up kind of feeling when I'm going to start painting. But this making these videos actually helps me out to have a motivation to just overcome that fear. It's like, okay, let's just do it and see what we can get out of it. I really love this color, really beautiful, dark, dark. Um, when you don't know how to continue, or maybe you don't see, you are not liking what it is. Of course, all paintings go through a ugly stage, like one of, of the people I follow, one of the artists I really like, Camilla Dunsborough. She says, all paintings go through an ugly stage, that's something that can get you through continue painting, but you can also turn things around and then see, okay, do I see anything that interests me here? I like this kind of hue around here. We can maybe dip some colors here. And you can also use things that will make textures, for example, salt. Let's try to put some salt here. Um, salt would actually, what it does is to kind of gather water, you know, when some, something is salty, it will like dry it. So you can put salt on different parts of your painting to create some texture. And the thing you just have to do is you put the salt 
and then you let it dry and you don't touch it until it's dry. So we're only gonna put it in this part of the painting. Nice. And you can also let, let's turn it upside down, what are we doing? You can also let your brush loose in a way, almost like you are not looking into what you're doing. Let's go with this one. Maybe we can do something like... For example, that could be something. Yeah, so I, as I said, I really encourage you to just like come in and get the favorite colors and just try to play with them together. Um, I hope that by doing this channel, I can get more and more opportunities to explore this kind of, of work because I really like it and grow with it as well, become better. Let's spread some of this around here, maybe. And maybe your thing will start looking like something. For example, now that I see here, this looks like perhaps a a wing around here. Maybe some sort of animal. And maybe I can get some of these around here. It's always easy to overdo it with the sprays, but I, I love it. I just want to have fun. So let's just do it like this. Yeah. As you can see, this is very versatile. It can be used for a lot of different things. And it's looking good, I think. I don't want to overdo it, which is always the thing. Uh, mm. Maybe over here, mix a little bit to get some more of these purple tones. Yeah, like that. I like it. Very nice. Sorry, I was in the middle of the camera. We can then explore maybe more mark making by taking a light hue, for example. So a watery, watery down. And we can maybe try to do some some blooms. And then you can see maybe. And that, that's a very nice one. I love when you just like touch a little bit of dense color and then it just blooms all over the the more watery section. And as I said, this part with the salt, better to just wait until it's completely done. So yeah, I think I am gonna wait for this to get dry. And then we see the results once this is dry. See you later. And we're back to see how this painting has turned out. So the first thing we have to do is to kind of brush away this uh, this salt. So we just like yeah, just move it out like that very lightly. You can use an old uh, brush as well to do that if you want. The textures are really really nice. Imagine making a whole page with pigment and that just salt. That could be something nice. And then we just take away the tape, the, the tapes. You take away the tapes without damaging your paper. You try to go at a lower angle, as the smallest angle you can. So very lightly like this. 
In this case, maybe it wasn't that needed because we didn't go out of the edges so much, but it's always nice as a protection. Like this, nice, and then... Another day is going to be more satisfying than this one, for sure. And yeah, this is the piece. You can make of it as you wish. Like, for example, actually, to me, it looks a little bit like a, the nose and the head of a wolf, could be, of a, maybe a dog. Um, here, there is some sort of feathery type of thing going on. So it's up to interpretation. I like it. I hope you guys like it too and hope to see you back here soon have a good day